Welcome back, folks, to another episode of Whiskey Review Time. Today, I've got a special guest, Carl Caps, a realtor, bourbon aficionado, just like myself. Today, what do we got, Carl? This is going to be one of my most desired, highly desirable bottles that I've been itching to get open, and I've been afforded this awesome opportunity, so thank you for having me. Hey, thank you for letting me try it. Oh, it's it's going to be one for the ages. This is a 2004 George T. Stagg of the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection lineup. It comes in at a beautiful, beautiful 129 proof. So we just took and cracked the cork and here we go. Uh, you wanna shake your bottle real quick? We got some glassware ready to go. Awesome. Oh, this is going to be glorious. Oh, yeah, hey, cheers. cheers. Let's get into that whiskey review. That nose is ridiculous. It's one of the things I've always loved about the George T. Stag is the nose is always very full up front, but it's not real acetone or very heavy on the alcohol. Yes, yes. And we get so many of those that are in this higher proof category that do. I agree with you. I'm getting like rich tobacco, caramel. I'm that getting... that stag profile is there. The, like when you have George T. Stag, there's a profile. It's there. It's prominent, and it's wonderful. What is that? A little green apple. A little mm -hmm. bit of fruit in there. That's... Like some dried fruits. I get a lot of a lot of the dark fruit, and that's very similar when we take the first sip. Hmm. Absolutely. First sip. That's absolutely mind-blowingly good. I love how it coats your mouth fully. Yeah. But it doesn't overpower your taste buds out no. the gate. Yeah, for 129 proof, I don't feel like it drinks maybe at 115. I would agree with you. There's the only time that you really get a burn out of it is when you're letting it sit mm -hmm. on the back of your tongue. Yeah. But then the moment that you swallow it down that entire just dark fruit just attacks you. I mean, right out the oh, gate. yeah. I'm getting like rich raspberry, apple, apricot. Like these fruit tones are there and prominent. And it's mixed with that vanilla and tobacco and it just weaves in and out. And this is a 15 year product. So you've got a little bit of oak in there. And it's, it's blended beautifully. It's very, very balanced. Yes. And sometimes you can get something that's hot and mm -hmm. it's a hot mess and it's very unbalanced. That's not this at all. It's very similar like when we deal with uh, some of the William Larry Weller uh, yeah. product. They I have agree. a hair proof level like this where you get into the 130s, high 120s very easily. And that, for some reason, seems to drink hotter than this does at the same proof point. I, You know what? That's actually... Because the, the, uh, the 2019 William Larry Weller was a 129 proof flat, if I remember correctly. Yes. So it's the exact same proof as this, and this does not drink near as hot as that did. I would 100% agree. I don't know why, but you're right. It, they do drink a little bit hotter. I still think it's kind of cool that this was distilled in 1989, too. Yes. <laughs> it's pretty freaking sweet. It's 1989. Cheers. And thanks again for sharing. The vanilla really does sit right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I do like how like the tobacco is exactly what I was feeling and thinking. It's a little bit of like a baking spice right before it kicks in. Dude, brown sugar yes. and caramel and tobacco just exploded. As this sat out for just a minute or two, now I'm getting like fudge brownie. Now I get those kind of chocolate notes, uh, deep fudge, dark chocolate, milk chocolate on some of the George T. Stags. Not all of them, but sometimes I'll get that profile. And I think that's due to that darkness that, you know, it kind of just the, the dark caramels coming in yeah. and as it flows. Yeah, absolutely. Man, this is an exceptional whiskey. I won for the decades, that's I, for sure. I, I've told you before that 03 is just like my knockout, drag out, one of my absolute top ends. This one is probably going to be right with it, right below yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and that's I think only it's because below. this has just a little bit more heat to it than the 03. And the 03 is a 134. So, yes. I mean, that's even hotter technically. One thing I don't see in this one that I saw in the 03 
that when you shared it, is it had that little bit of dusty funk, mm -hmm. just a scotch of it, mm -hmm. because it was barreled so long ago, you get right. a little bit of, you don't get really that, that much with this. You had a profile in there that said, hey, how are you doing? And then it just sat in the background. Mm -hmm. um, that, you don't get the dusty funk so much on this one. Still, it's an absolutely amazing pour. I was surprised at how light this one was compared to those other years, because when I had them all out last night, yeah. looking at them, this was the lightest one by far. Wow. But it doesn't drink like it's light. No. I mean, you can see it still has great legs to it. It coats it's very well. It's not 2019. Agreed. We'll Definitely not 2019 that. George T. <laughs> Which is still a phenomenal bottle if you can get your hands on it. Do Please. not turn away a George T. Stag if you can get your hands on it. At the same never time. Never had a bad one, really. No. But there mm -hmm. are years that everyone will have. Better than others. Yeah, we'll this guy, like boom. It's there. Anyways, let's do the uh, the the back end and the mm -hmm. finish, and then we'll do the score. Mm -hmm. We'll see where we're at. Man, this nose is just crazy. It's brown sugar, tobacco, and green apple, all in one. Anyways, mm. on the very end, on the very very back end, you get those light notes of chocolate, a little bit of brownie, lots of brown sugar. A little bit of pepper, a little bit of spice, um, a scotch of heat, but nothing crazy. Nothing to turn you off. Oh, not no. at all. Oh, no. I like that heat because it drives it home. Right. It, like, it, that means the finish doesn't fade. It's still on my tongue. It's not a short finish. I would call this a long finish. I agree with Or that. a medium to long finish because this is not a medium at all. Definitely not a short finish. And it's fantastic. It's leaving that stag profile on my tongue. still, And that's what I want. That stag is known for their profile. No one else really has this profile at all in bourbon. And I want this to, to resonate on my tongue for as long as possible because it's such a great pour. I agree with you wholeheartedly. This is the, These older ones definitely have that longer finish that does reside. I mean, I'm still tasting it while I'm talking, and it's been a, a, a minute or two since. Yeah. yeah. So I think on the back end, you got more of that tobacco. You got a lot of brown sugar, the vanilla, caramels, um, a little bit of leather in there and the dried fruits, and that drives back. And then you got the heat on the back with the palate. And then you got a little bit of that tobacco and those, you know, a little bit of that dried fruit, a little bit of sweetness going down. It's just it's a wonderful finish. It's that stag profile that you went and look for. Totally agree. Anyways, what are you thinking? We score at one to ten, no rookie scores, you know how we do it. Okay, so on a scale of one to ten. And, and we, we don't normally do round numbers, just FYI. Oh no, it has to be three digits long at minimum, right? Yeah, like so like a seven, two, seven, three. And mm -hmm. those are just for sample numbers. Right. Not how I actually think this. And is. not scoring it against any other George T. Stack, just scoring yeah. it as a pure self whiskey. This for me is at, is this is an eight point six three. Wow. Wow. I would have, I would have to say I think it's I think it's an eight eight personally I think this is a knockout freaking whiskey we're in the same ballpark we're really close on the score um, we didn't talk about this prior no. we had never had I've never had oh four I have not either at least at, in a long time or if I can remember or if, I don't even know if I did in the past I know I had a couple of them had oh three with you right. thanks to you um, phenomenal by the way Absolutely. but uh, I'd have to say this is an eight eight. Eight six three, mm -hmm. yeah. I think we're right in the money right there. Yep. Definitely phenomenal whiskey. Get your hands on it if you can. You're gonna pay for it. Secondary is a bit expensive. It's a what bit expensive. Running? So this bottle, uh, from most places that I've seen, is gonna run you clear above seventeen hundred to two thousand dollars. This is what it is. If someone has one sitting on a shelf, and that's the hardest thing is finding someone who actually has one still. Yeah. So secondary sucks, but sometimes we pay for it because they're worth it. Anyways, Carl, thanks for bringing this. Thank you, brother. Bourbon aficionado and realtor in Cincinnati and Kentucky. So give him a shout. If you need to sell your home, buy a home, whatever, give him a shout. Anyways, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that subscribe at the bottom. See you next time on Whiskey Review Time. Cheers. Hey, guys.